Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers, and welcome to part four of the Project Manager. I've got a lot to show you, including the project tasks and how they appear on the schedule in different formats based on the different resources. We've also added weekends and holidays to the schedule, and of course, those are going to be dynamic based on a brand new setup screen. So we'll be able to add multiple holidays, we'll be able to adjust weekend and off days, and we also have project status and defaults as well as project types and defaults. So we've got a lot to cover. So let's get started. All right. Thank you so much for joining me on this part four. If you haven't caught parts one, two or three, I'll include the links down below. So make sure to catch those. We're going to take right off where we left off on part four. In part four, we went over how to add tasks and how to add the different statuses of those tasks, but we didn't cover how that those tasks will be affected on the scheduler. And right now, the way I have it is these individual tasks show up on the scheduler in a little bit of a different color. We have a different gradient here, and we've done that through conditional formatting based on the individual tasks. Now, if they're, of course, selected, it's going to appear in orange. So we see the different orange. And if we look here in the conditional formatting and manage rules we're going to see a few different conditional formats in fact I've got th three different ones for the selected for the selected and you'll see the fill types we've got different patterns and I've used patterns you may want to change this in fact probably you may not like the patterns that I've used but basically what I've done is I've used a specific pattern for a specific status and that is based on if it's selected which would appear in orange or if it's in green if it's not selected it'll show up in yellow if it's pending light green or a little bit darker green based on those different gradients there so we're going to get into that we've got a lot to cover and how does that happen but to understand that we have to understand now if we remember correctly in the last when we went over project tasks we know that in the project tasks they are given specific statuses and we want those statuses reflected on the schedule on the project manager schedule now we'll see that a selected a completed is going to show up as r and of course that's going to be wingdings font so it's going to show up as a selected checkbox whereas uh, the sense symbol is going to show up as a pending or i should say in process in process and of course pending would be the unchecked and that's it that is the pound sign here so of course in the wingdings font as these are this would show up as specific symbols and if you'll see it, we drop down here we'll see that's the wingdings 2 font so keep that in mind as we move forward now the idea is to bring these into the schedule and use conditional formatting here and you'll see however those symbols are not displayed here there's no symbols here so how do we know there's no r there's no pound there's no set so how do we get the conditional formatting to show up how do we get these different orange gradients here how do we get these different green gradients here based on the specific tasks well again we'll do the same thing just as we did for the conditional formatting for our main groups and that is to use a different range so here we have the project number and this is what gives us our main colors and we went over this I believe in part one or part two actually we covered that but I've added an additional table now called task status and we're bringing this status here and you'll see that individual R C and and of course if we were to change this I can change this to if I change this to wingdings you're gonna see that it's the check marks but the conditional format it won't matter for conditional formatting but just to view it you can see if I change that to wingdings you'll see the symbol the only reason I have left it R is because in the conditional formatting you'll see that it's the R the sense or the pound sign so in the conditional formatting it's easier to recognize but as far as you know for our purposes it won't make a difference what font is here in this task status so basically the idea is this when we create a conditional format in our starting square our starting cell here and we continue all the way down it's going to apply to all the way here right starting at our first I believe it's 37 about 
AV to 37, so something like that. That's our. So when we create a conditional formatting, we want to select everything that it's applied to. And then, of course, we're going to use our formula, but we're going to use the first cell in our formula. In this case, it's going to be R4. And then it's going to be based on based on a value in FN4, right? And of course, make sure that those cells are not absolute because we need to move it horizontally and vertically down. So we want to make sure that we, we use those FN4 or we use R4 that they are not absolute, right? There's no dollar sign. So let's go into conditional formatting and take a look at those rules. The first one we'll use is the, the green four. And basically this is, is a very simple cell. We're gonna say FN4 equals the sense. If that equals, then we're gonna give it this pattern color, this yellow pattern and this pattern. So I just give it any one. I don't necessarily love the patterns that I've used, but you know, of course, you're welcome to change it to any pattern you want. Maybe I should choose green on this or light green, but you get the point. Um, we get different, you can use different colors, different styles, it, really much anything you want. I just wanted it something different. You can even change the colors here. So we could go to a yellow or something like that. So R is completed. And of course we have here. So if we look at the individual cell, we see the completed is the R. And of course the incomplete is the pound. Of course, that is the one where it's pending. We have not started, not started yet is also pending. And of course, if it's in the process, it's gonna be that colored. And that would be of course the sense symbol. That is the full colored. So when we look at it, it's a full colored box. You can also change your symbols. If you, if you find symbols that you'd rather use, just go over ahead and go into insert and symbol. And you've got a host of symbols that you can use for that really. And you know, I've used three symbols that the check, but you can use any symbol you want, whatever, whatever makes sense. You can choose from special characters. You can even use a different types of characters. If you have fonts, different fonts. So it really, it's up to you what you use. I'm just giving you a basic sample so you don't necessarily need to use what I've used so the idea is what we're saying is if FN drag it over here FN equals sense then that sent symbol then color it that give it that gradient if it's R then use this you know and so this is going to apply to the entire table because this table is an exact match as far as the number of columns and number of rows as this is right here okay so we understand how we get those gradients so let's go over those a little bit and of, and of course the orange is a little bit different so let's take a look at those one more time let's go over the green just real quickly if it's an R it's gonna give it this if it's the pound we're gonna give it this and these are very very simple conditional formatting these are very simple so it's if it equals any of these symbols then of course we're going to give it that gradient now if it's the orange what about the orange gradient there's two conditions right there's two conditions it's got to have that R the cent or the pound and the other condition is that the project number must equal this that is the project number of this starting at DN must equal this project number in I4 right here I4 so that's critical okay so those are the two conditions when we want a colored orange so let's take a look at that now that we know that there's two conditions so here's the orange gradient and here's those two conditions one DN4 because that is the first row and first column of that table that contains the project numbers Okay, and then I4, we want to make sure that I4 doesn't equal blank. That's how we got that orange color. So we want to make sure that, you know, if we can, if we create a brand new project, we want to make sure that we don't color. It's not for, it's only for when there's a project selected. So that when there's a new project, there's no project number in I4 because it's a new project. We want to make sure that we don't color anything in orange. And then our second conditional table here, FN4 equals the pound. That's our second. This is where we bring in the project status. And I'll show you how to bring those into that from the table in a moment. So I just want to go over that. So these are the three conditions, three conditions. And in fact, I could probably add one more condition here into the green, but I don't think it's going to matter here. So FN4, if, if there's no project status, let's pull up new project and make sure that these go away. But if it's a new project, then this is blank, but it's not affecting it. So it only affects the orange one. So you'll see the orange gradients are all gone. And that is because there is no selected project. We are now in the new project status, right? No project number here. 
right, in I4. So therefore, the orange goes away. If we cancel new, it'll go, it'll go back to a specific project number, and then that project number will be selected. And that is why we have to make sure that I4, the project number, is not blank. So that's critical. Okay, moving on. So we see how we get those gradient fills, but now how do we get these specific symbols, right? So to get these symbols in this table, we're going to start with some named ranges in the project tasks, right? We need name. There's important things in the project manager. We need to understand those tasks are assigned to specific resources here. So that's an important part of it. They're also they also have specific start dates and they have specific end dates. So we want to make sure to cover those as well. For example, if this, if it's going to take this long, we want to cover this. If this task takes four days and it's been completed, we want to make sure that it covers all four days, the entire task. So the end date is also very critical. So we're going to start with just those. So we've got the start date and we've got the end date. Those are important. So we need to put those into named ranges. All right, so let's take a look at some of those named ranges that we have on here uh, into the uh, formulas and named range. We're going to look for project tasks. That's where our named ranges are located. Task here, task end date, task project number, task resource, task start, and task status. So we've got all of those name ranges, and they're pretty much primarily the same. They're all dynamic name ranges using offset and then count A. And in fact, they're all going to start uh, in different, uh, they're all going to use counting of the column A. In fact, the reason we're counting column A is because A, the project number, is always going to have a value absolute value of that so of course we cannot have a project task without a project number so that's important and of course the remainder the starting column is going to be based on whatever column so for example in this task status we are focused on column F whereas in the task start date we're going to be focusing on column D and of course this is dynamic so as these rows grow then so do the dynamic ranges we've got task project number and of course the task resources which is also the employee so we have all of those those four or five different tasks end date project number resource start date and then the status we're going to use all of those to get the data into the project manager that we want so now that we know that we've got those task named ranges we'll understand a little bit more the formulas that we're going to use in the project manager and so here we're going to be using index and as well as some product now some product is going to determine the row index is going to get us the value in that row so basically what i want to do is in the project test i want to find for example a specific if there is a specific assigned to on a specific date or on or after a specific start date before or end a specific date and i want to return whatever the status is if those conditions are met three conditions we're going to be focused on assigned to the start date if it fits within a a range the end date if it fits within a range and then I, if those three are met then I want to return using index the status so that is what we're going to do in this formula again so here is the formula that we are focused on right here we're going to index as I just mentioned what are we indexing we're indexing the task status because that is the value we want now in order to get that value I need to get the row the row so with the row is what we're going to be focusing on and to get that row we have three different conditions we have the resource is going to be one condition is the resource must be equal to Q4 and if we look over here under Q4 that means the resource must be Fred Fredders okay the next condition that must be better is the task start date must be less than or equal to FN. The task start date must be less than or equal to FN. What is FN3? FN3 is our date. And of course, that date is linked to our original January 1st. And of course, FN3, you'll see the three remains absolute while the column FN remains dynamic. So as we drag this formula over, so do the dates. Okay, so that's our second condition is the start date. Our third condition that must be met is the task end date. In fact, the task end date needs to be greater than 
or equal to Fn3. So when all of those conditions are met, we need to pull out a row. And to get the rows, we're going to get the row of the task status. We're going to determine once all of three these three conditions are met. And when those three conditions are met, that means they're all non-zero, 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 non-zero. So when those conditions are met, we're going to multiply that times the task, the row of the task status. That is going to get us the absolute row, but I need the actual row. What is the difference the, between the absolute and the actual row? Well, the absolute row is, this would be three, right? Three is the absolute row, but I need to return the three. I need to get that. I need to get just one because we're going to be indexing the project rows, right? So if the absolute row is three, if it returns three, but I really need this project number, right? And this, when we index project number, the first row is 11. So in order to get that, if I return three, right? If the return is three, but I really need to get the first row of the index, I need to subtract two to get that. So I want that 11 because the return is three. So, but I need 11 because 11 is the first value of the index. So we need to subtract two. And that's simply because our rows are start, our actual table starts on row three. So the last part is subtract two. Now that, all of that is going to get us our row number. All of this determines the row number. The next part of an index is to get the column number. And what are we indexing? We're indexing task status. So we just, that is the only column that we're indexing. That is the only column that we need to pull the values from. So this is going to return one. This in itself is going to get us the exact status, excuse me, the exact status is what we're looking for. So just to go over that again, I don't want to, in this case, we're not returning the project number, we're returning the status. So I want to pull that status, right? I want to get that. This is what we're indexing here, right here. So I want to pull that first value if, if all those conditions are met, the start date, the end date, and the ta and the resource. If all those are met, then pull this status. And that is what we're going to pull in, and that would be put right here. But but in this case, it's blank. There's an error. That means the conditions were not met. If error, it's going to return empty. That means the conditions are not met. If those conditions are met, so when we drag this formula, when we drag it, bring it all the way across here, for those conditions, when it is met, it will return the status. It will return the status here and here because conditions are met. Those three conditions are all met, and the status will be returned. Now that we have the status and we can do the same, just drag it down and drag it across, and that formula is going to cover this entire table, returning based on the date here and based on the resource assigned to here. So that's how we get our statuses, and that's how they are placed in here. And then, of course, our conditional formatting takes over from there. Of course, remember, it's based on that first formula that first row and that first column in the table and it's dragged down because it's not it's dynamic it's not an absolute so it applies to it applies to starting with r4 and all the way down so that is how we're able to get these individual status colorations where you see the orange darker orange or none that is how we get it because those are based on the three different statuses now you can assign as many statuses as you want you can assign any conditional formula now that you understand the underlying premise of it you'll be able to make those changes yourself all right so that's how we get the status now we've got uh, holidays and we've got days off. Now there's a few important things with holidays and day off. If we have a, let's take this job here, this job here, site testing, this is a six day job, I believe. Six day, let's take a look, six days, exactly. Now if this six days, well, what if those, what if the holidays land on those six days? And or what if a weekend lands within those? Well, it's a six days of work, six days of work. And of course, we cannot include non-work days. So if there's a weekend, including Saturday and Sunday, that lands within it, we need to make sure there's three. If it starts on the 8th, we've got the 8th, 9th, and the 10th to work. And of course, we've got to start back up on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday to include those six days. So how do we get this six days here to go across here. Well, that's actually quite easy. We are going to use a formula, a function that we called Workday International. And let's start before we get into that. Let's look in the setup screen just so we can go over a few basic things that I show you. We have the weekly schedule. So basically what I want to do is I want to allow the user to turn some days on and some days 
off. And to do that, all we need is just the data validation on or off. And that's just simply here, data validation. And I've given this two options, on and off. And then I've set some conditional formatting. If we highlight the range, go to home and conditional formatting, we see that we have some rules, just one rule or two rules, actually one for the off orange color row and the other one for off. So basically I4 is equal to off. Now, of course, that four is dynamic. Remember, there's no dollar sign, so that's going to allow us to apply it to the entire range as long as our range starts in the same row. Our applies to range must also start in row four, so that's very important. As long as they both start in four, it'll become dynamic so that we can apply that conditional formatting to the entire range. And then, of course, all we did here is in the format, we've colored the cell gray, and then I've given it a font of a little bit less than the dark black. And that's all we did, just so, so that automatically, as we change the on-off status of individual days, we can then control this gray or gray or off, off and on, so just that simple. Okay, so now we've got the days off, so now how do we We've also given a named range. I've given this table work days. This is the work days range. All right, and there's a great formula called Workday International, and that's going to allow us to determine the end date. So what I want to do is when we have a project list, what I want to do here, I've got the project list here. And what I want to do is I've got a start date, and I've got a duration and the number of days, right? So if this Let's take a look at this. If this sample here, if we start on the start date of the third and we have four days, if those days, if any of those days from the third to the seventh land on a holiday or a weekend, then we need to add one. And we need to add one. And we have a Workday International. And Workday International is a great formula. It's going to help us do it. All we need here is really three or four components. We have the start date. We know that. In fact, we're going to go D14 minus 1. And the reason is because we don't want to count a day twice. If we use four days, right, we don't want to count a day. So we're going to subtract one, and that's going to help us. The next is the number of days. And of course, we could just as usually do days minus 1. And so J14, we have the number of days. And now I need to know, is there any weekends in this? And we're going to use a code, and I'll show you that code in just a second. And then, of course, we're going to use the holiday dates. And that means if there's any of the holiday dates that end up in that range, they should be excluded as well. In fact, that is going to return an end date. All of this is going to return an end date. And, of course, it is going to add in any weekends and add in any holidays to determine the end date. So it's going to add, it's going to take the start date. It's going to add in any of the duration days. It's going to add in any weekend days. And it's going to add in any holiday dates. Now, the holiday dates is pretty simple. That is simply this right here. And, of course, that is a dynamic named range as well so as it grows so when we look into the formulas and named range and we see the holiday dates right here we see that that is a dynamic named range right here so that's going to cover all of our holiday dates and as we include those let's take a look let's take a project so we can take a specific sample so that we can look at that let's take a look at this one right here site studio because this is going to cover both a holiday and let's start that on the 15th so we can cover both I'm going to start on, I've, oh, I've also added the calendar to this. Now you can see that. Okay, and we're going to, let's make it five days long. Okay, so now we know it's going to be five working days. One, two, three, four, five. So five working days. But if you look, January 16th is a holiday. January 18th and 19th are weekends. So we need to make sure that our end date must be on the 23rd, 23rd. Now, if we take out that holiday, in fact, let me change that holiday to the 26th, and we'll see that it's automatically affected here. I've also added a calendar here too. Now we go back into Project Manager and we see we have three working days, but now it's it ends on the 21st, and that's exactly what we want. So we wanted to skip the weekends, and we wanted to remain five work days, but we wanted to skip. And how did we do that? Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we have to understand a little bit about the work day. Now, if we look in here in the project, you'll see something in this formula called weekend code. Now, let me show you what that is. That is a named range, and that is going to tell us when our weekends are not, or when our weekends are or not. And I've moved that over here. OK, 
Okay, so our weekend code is, in this case, it's right here. It is located in B33. That is a named range weekend code. And you'll see these seven numbers here, these seven digits. Zero represents a work day. One represents an off day. So let's go ahead and say we say we only want to work, we don't want to work Monday. Monday's going to be our only day off. That is going to return a code 100000, 1 plus 60. So when we look back into the project manager, we now see this code changes. This is a text string. So this particular function will recognize that text string. It will recognize it. So instead of, we could do the same thing, I could put in right here 100000. That is going to recognize it automatically as the same thing. Okay, so it's just a text string. So I could just as easily replace it with the string, but I've used the name range. So this means Monday is an off day, Tuesday is not, Wednesday is not, Thursday is not, so and so on and so on. So each one of these zeros, the zeros represent a work day, the one represents an off day. So that is how we do it. So let's just fix that formula. I'll bring it right down here so we can formulate. And now we get the weekend. So what I've done is I've used this as a named range. And all I had to do is take these days, which are absolutely related to this here. So one, one for off, zero for on. So it's the same thing in this formula. If we take a look at this formula here, set up, if it's off, it equals one, otherwise zero. And I've just brought that all the way down. On is zero, off is one, simple. And then I've taken this formula, our weekend code named range, and I've used concatenate to put all of those seven together into one string. Now we can use that in a formula. So as our days change, so does this. So when I make it, change this to on and change the weekend to off, you'll see that that text string and those days change. So now we have the two, last two are one, and the last two is one, and of course, that also is automatically in our project list in our weekend code here. So basically, it knows which days are off and which days are on. So when we use that in the formula, it automatically, it's an amazing formula and function that allows us to skip weekends and holidays based on a very, very, very simple code. And holidays is simply a named range. It just looks for a holiday. 113 and if there's a holiday it adds a day here or if there's multiple holidays that are add as many days within that range that is going to get us our end date now that we have our end date we know we can, we must drag the job all the way from the start date to the actual end dates and of course add in any weekends and add in any holidays as additional now back to the project manager. We've also recognized both weekends and holidays. So let's take a look at some of the named ranges here. When we highlight some cells, go back into the conditional formatting, and let's take a look at some of the conditional formatting. So we want weekends. Now I want to put weekends in a gray background. So let's take a look and edit that rule. And there's a few direct, there's a few formulas here. So all I want to know is one, Q3, three being dynamic, must not equal zero. And that means I need a resource. I only want to color the fields if there's a resource. If I take this out, if I take this out, it's going to color all the way down, even if there's no resource. So we want to make sure that we only color those cells with resource. So that's an important component. And then the rest is an indirect. A, right? Remember if we saw A and the weekday R32. Well, what is that? Okay, our weekday of this date right here, January 1st. What is the weekday of that? Or for example, January 4th, the weekday, that is a Saturday, right? So that's going to return a number. Weekday two, it's going to return number. Let's take a look at here. And we look down here, starting one, two, three, and that's going to return a five. Our weekday, weekday, right? Equals, let's look at weekday. We look at our weekday function. We see we've got a serial number, and then we have numbers here. So we've got our date first, and then I've used two. What is two? Why two? Because our days start on Monday, one through seven and end on Sunday. So that's very important. We're using two because that's going to tell us our weekday. That is the right order of the days, right? Monday, starting Monday through Sunday. Why did I use that? Because I used, I started with Monday here. So we need to remain consistent. I started with Monday here. So we need to use, when we use the weekday function, we need to use two. So that way Monday, if it's a Monday, it's going to return one. 
If it's a Tuesday, it's going to return 2. But what I want to do is I want to know if this is 0 or not. Okay, so let's take a look at how this may work. If we use the weekday function equals weekday, and we use a serial number, let's start on the 5th of January, which is the weekend, comma, 1, right? 2, we're going to use 2. Why are we using 2? Monday through Sunday. Our days start on Monday, so we're going to use 2. That is how we've recorded it in the setup screen, starting with Monday, so we're going to use 2. And that is going to return a 6, right? 6. So what I want to do is I want to go down here, and I want to locate this. I want to say 38. Is 38... We know we've got six now. We know we've got day six. So is 38 a one or zero? So all I need to do is say 32, 32, we're using that as plus the day number, which is six. So A, what is it? We're using column A, A32 plus the day number. What's here? Is it a one or is it a zero? If it's a one, color it gray. So that's exactly what we've done right here. So we take a look at back in the conditional formatting, manage rules. Go into the gray. First of all, Q3 does not equal zero. We want to make sure that we're only coloring those columns and those rows that contain an actual resource. So that's one condition. The other is indirect. We're going to use A, just as I said, column A. And what, right? Remember, we need the row. We know the column. We need to know the row. Is it 32, 33, 34, whatever? How do we get that? It's going to be based on the day. So it's weekday starting in R3. That is the first column we're going to start on. And of course, the columns are going to be dynamic. That is why we're able to carry this over through the entire table. And then, so we're going to say whatever this returns weekday, remember on a Saturday, it's going to return six. On a Sunday, it's going to return seven. So if this is going to return six on a Saturday, six plus 32, that would be 38. So what is in A38? If a38 is equal to 1, then return the gray. So if these conditions are met, two conditions, A38 is equal to 1 and Q3, meaning Q, of course, 3 would go for every single row starting at 3. The rows are dynamic. The column remains fixed and absolute. Okay, so that is how we get it. So in this case, when the day is 5, excuse me, the day is 6 or the day is 7, Saturday and Sunday, then go ahead and color that gray. All right, so that is how we get it. And of course, if as long as we have the and, this is going to be zero. So that's why we're not coloring anything below that. So because we use the, we get this six, because we know here, down here, we know which day, all we need to do is in use indirect, indirect to get this value, get this value, get this value. So it's indirect 32 plus whatever the day number, day number one, day number two, three, and so on. That pulls using indirect our, whether it's, if it's a zero, then don't color code it. If it's a one, then color code the entire day. All right, now let's go over to holidays. We'll notice holidays are colored in purple. Of course, you can color it any color you want. We can do conditional formatting and manage rules, and you know that we've used holidays as the named range. Remember, we have, it's a dynamic name range holiday date. So when we edit this rule, we can see a few things. Again, Q3 must not equal zero. Q, Q meaning the column three, meaning dynamic, meaning any row in column Q, bringing it down. And of course, is an error. Now we're going to test for is an error. We're going to check for a match. Is R3, remember, starting in R3 remains absolute. We're always going to focus on row 3. The column R is going to be dynamic. So that means we're going to start in R, and we're going to go through every column all the way to AV, because R applies to also starts in column R and goes over to AV. So we're going to start there, and we're going to check for our holiday dates. Now we're going to use the match. Is R3 in the holiday dates? If if there's an if there's no error, what if there's no error? That means if there's no error equal false, that means there is a date that was found. So if there's a date was found and it's zero, then return purple. If there's an error, of course, that means the date was not found. And of course, then again, our conditional formatting formula would not ring true.
So that is how we can do it for holidays. And of course, you can format it and give it any color you want simply by doing that. So we've got holidays in purple, we've got weekends in gray. All right, so that is how we cover the holiday dates and we get them displayed on our schedule. And you already know how in our project list, how we've covered holidays, we've added them based on our workday international formula here. All right, so we've got that covered. Let's see what else is on our list. Now in our setup screen, we have also the ability to now set project defaults. So that means when we have a brand new project, we can set the defaults for those. For example, if I want every new project, when I click new, to click on site updates, let's hide this for now. If I wanted to create site updates and in products, all I need to do is simply select it. And I'm gonna show you how we did that in just a second. And the reason we do this is when we have a new project and we click add project right here, we can see that very simply we have a name, we have the site updates here and the in process here. If we were to change that to new sites and pending, then when we go into and we add a new project, we will see right away that now we have new sites and pending. So it allows us to set a default. Now there's a few functions and features that we use that in VBA code to get that. The first of which is the checkbox here. Selecting it allows us to select just a single cell. So the basically in VBA, when a user makes a selection here, of course not here, meaning there's no value in project type, so we don't want anything to happen. We only want it to happen when there's an actual value here, and then they can select something inside. So how do we do that? And we do the same exact feature and functionality for project status. So let's go into the VBA and see exactly how we did that into the developers tab under visual basic and we go back into now we're in the setup which is sheet six so we've got a little bit of code i've also added the calendar feature in for the holidays here and that's how we do it in the calendar we have selection change if the user makes a selection between k4 k33 we're going to show that calendar we also need to check to make sure there's a calendar sheet and a calendar show we've been over that in other videos all right, so if for, let's, let's label this, there is no label on this, so this of course would be project types in C. On selection change of project type defaults. And of course here we've got on selection change of project status defaults. Okay, so now, if the user makes a change to a selection change to C4 or C33 and two conditions, that's one condition if they make a selection change, the other condition is B of the same row must not equal empty. And if you remember, when I selected on a specific cell where B was empty, nothing happens because we have two conditions. They must make a selection here they must also have a value here in the same row. So we've done the check and we've done that same check right here and here. So we did the same exact thing. So when we go back into the code, you see you'll have those two conditions. And then what do I want to do? Well, the first thing is I want to clear every other value since we only want the user to be able to select one single default value, only one. We want to clear everything out, everything, right? And then what we want to do is in C and the target row, add this U with the two dots above it. That U is actually the checkbox when we have the wing dings font. And if you look here, you'll see that the font has been set to wing dings. Wing dings is going to give us that checkmark, and that's what we use. So that allows us to check automatically just one single item in a specific list. That's really handy. You may want to have multiples, and if, if in conditions you want to have multiples, of course you can not clear out the contents. Not, not clearing out the contents would do that allow you to select multiple. I do have a video on selecting multiple cells. All right, next up, we have the same exact on the selection of project status. So if the user makes a selection change between F4 and F33, and of course, 
E this time, and the target row does not equal D, meaning there is a value in E, then of course clear the contents, in this case, F44, F4 to F33, and then add that checkbox value, of course that's the U in the Wingdings font, to F and the target row. All right, so that is how we get the checkbox, but how do we automatically get that value to show up right here. Well, I've added some named ranges, just as I do, I've added named ranges for here and here, and let's take a look at those into the named ranges, and that's going to help us. We have project types, so let's go ahead and look into project types, and if we tab over, we'll see the project types is a named dynamic name range using offset for all the project types, so this will grow. And I've done the same thing for project type defaults just in the column over. Now, of course, we could use a single named range for all of that. That would be fine, too. But I just wanted to show you two different named ranges just so that we can, the code is a lot clearer when we use that in the code. We don't have to jog over when we use index. And I've done the same thing for project types. I've added one for project types. If we go ahead and tab over here, we'll see. And of course, I've done the same thing for project status. So when we tab over to project status, we see the project status, and of course, the project status default. So we've done the same thing for types and the same thing for status. Both have dynamic named ranges. And of course, remember, the, the defaults are based on the counting of the whatever's in the project status. We're not counting what's in the default column. We're counting what's in the status column. So that's very important. All right, so we've covered that. Now we know we've got those named ranges. And just remember those named ranges because we're going to use those. We're going to use the find function in BBA to get it. So the idea is when we have a new job, whatever, wherever this checkbox is placed, I want to put this in the new jobs. I want to put that right in the new job. When we click add project, I want new sites to appear here, whatever's checked, and I want pending to appear here. So we're going to do that into the VBA. Now we have, of course, some code under the project macros, and we have project new, right? This is the code that runs, and I've been over this code a little bit, but we've made some changes. This is the code that runs every time a user adds a new project. So what do we have here? Well, we have some additional code. We have now we're dimensioning two different ranges, found default type as a range and found default status as a range. So we've defined those two ranges because we're going to use the find in those ranges. We're going to look for the checkbox. So the first thing we want to do is we want to set the found default type equal to sheet six. That's the setup. Range, what range are we looking in? We're looking in the product type default. That's the named range I just showed you in the setup screen. And what are we looking for? We're going to look for that little u. We're looking for the checkbox. Next time, we're looking for that. We're going to set this, okay? So whether it's found or not, it's going to be located in this range here. Now, our next is going to check. If not found is nothing. That means it is found. If something was found, if it's found, then do something. Then E6, of course, sheet 1 E6, that is exactly where our default types we want. We want to put that right in E6 here. What do I want to put there? What do I want to put there? I want to put in whatever is in B and the found row. Whatever is in column B and the row that was found, I want to put that value in there. So we're going to do that with just that line of code. Then E6 equals sheet 6B and the row, found default type, the row, whatever whatever row that was found in, I want to put it. That's going to tell us the row was found. And that's going to set our default type for the project. All right, next up, we're going to do the same thing with the default found status. In this case, we are going to look in the default status product range. That's the range where the checkbox is located. And if, if that checkbox, here known as the U with the two dots above it, there's a proper name for it, I don't know it, if it's found, it's going to be located here in the default, found default status. If not is nothing means if it's found, then in this case, E10, E10 of sheet 1 is going to equal sheet 6, E, and the default found row. That should be default status row. Okay, now we're going to get the right information. I'll run it. Okay, now we have it. Okay, so when we cancel new and we add new here, and now we've got new sites and in process. Okay, so we've got that. So now we show that the check mark is automatically set. So you see how that happens? We have, of course, I just fixed that issue. 
found the default status row of that and found the default type. So we have both of those. It's going to locate the rows where those were found and return whatever is in the specific column. So it's going to return whatever is in the row of the found one, whatever's in the row of the found one, and then it's going to return those values and put those values right in here. That way we can set defaults for new projects. It's kind of a nice feature. And of course, if you don't want any defaults, we would just delete, delete whatever's there, and then that would create no defaults and then we could add that that would in that case it's not found so when we cancel new and then of course we add a project those values are going to be blank there'll be no defaults there then so if that's what you want all right great so we've seen how to add new we've seen how to add new default projects we've seen covered how to use on and off days within the schedule not only to of course color it but how to add additional days onto the project that compensate for those specific projects including the holidays and we've also seen how to use some product along with index to pull information from additional tables for the task status and that's going to get us our conditional formats to show statuses project statuses within the scheduling itself so we've gotten a lot of that covered now we have also used named ranges and holidays we've also seen how to use date international along with this formula here so that we can show that date international so that it, we can compensate for the end dates and for any weekends or holidays within that using the work day international so we've gotten a lot of that covered all right i really appreciate it and if you like this training you will love the advanced dashboard master class so that is a 15 hour master class i hope you get a chance to take a look at that we've got tons and tons of people joining that course and they really love it it's really advancing their freelancing career and it will yours too of course we also have the 100 workbook project if you like these trainings you want to keep them free that will help us out a lot so i would appreciate it I will include the links down below, of course, also for the workbooks. If you want to grab this workbook, I'll include the links down below as well. As always, I appreciate your likes, your shares, and your comments, so please leave them below. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week.